Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What is a declassified document that is so unbelievable it sounds fake? Bat bombs were an experimental World War II weapon developed by the United States. The bomb consisted of a bomb-shaped casing with over a thousand compartments, each containing a hibernating Mexican free-tailed bat with a small, timed incendiary bomb attached. Dropped from a bomber at dawn. The casings would deploy a parachute in mid-flight and open to release the bats, which would then disperse and roost in eaves and attics in a 20, 40-mile radius, 32 to 64 kilometers. The incendiaries, which were set on timers, would then ignite and start fires in inaccessible places in the largely wood and paper constructions of the Japanese cities that were the weapon's intended target. The United States Navy took control in August 1943. Using the codename Project X-Ray. The US scrapped the project after beginning the Manhattan Project. It's crazy that this weapon was actually developed and would have been implemented had the US not developed nuclear weapons. Project A119 was a top secret study by the US government to predict the effects of detonating a nuclear warhead on the moon, big enough to be visible from Earth. They wanted to do this because they thought the Soviets would be doing something similar for the anniversary of the October Revolution. It didn't end up going ahead because the study, unsurprisingly, concluded that this was a terrible fucking idea. Two funny things about this. The Soviets were indeed doing a similar study that came to the same conclusion. The reason it was declassified is because one of the scientists working on this project was Carl Sagan. Sagan accidentally leaked the documents of this project after using it as evidence of his previous work when applying for a job years after project ended. The wreckage of the Titanic was found because the Navy was looking for the wreckage of two nuclear subs in the area. They staged the expedition as a private venture to find the Titanic to cover for the fact that they were actually looking for the submarines. They actually ended up finding all three wreckages, although they only reported on the Titanic at the time. Edit, thanks for the positive response, there has been a lot of great discussion in the replies, and people have added a ton of details I missed. I'm happy to have kicked off such a cool discussion. A dead British officer washes ashore Spain during WW2, with a briefcase of top secret documents handcuffed to his wrist. Spain is neutral but as a fascist nation, supports Germany tacitly, and allows them to photograph the documents before returning them to the British, so they continue to remain neutral. The documents detail an Allied plan to launch a naval invasion of Greece, and attack into Germany from the soft underbelly that is the Balkans and Hungary. The Germans eat the bait, and the Axis move forces to defend against this front in Greece. However this is where the Allies reveal their trap card and invade a much more poorly defended Sicily. The British officer was a random Welsh homeless person who had recently died, who was dressed up as a British officer, given a fully detailed set of papers, and backstory, including love letters and a picture of a girlfriend, some fake papers in a briefcase, and dropped off the coast of Spain by submarine. There's a declassified CIA document about them interviewing people who claim to be able to astral project themselves onto Mars into underground alien cities or something. It was very in-depth but I can't remember what it's called. The Gay Bomb the Gay Bomb and Halitosis Bomb are formal names for two non-lethal psychochemical weapons that a United States Air Force research laboratory speculated about producing. The theories involve discharging sex pheromones over enemy forces in order to make them sexually attracted to each other. In 1994 the Wright Laboratory in Ohio, a predecessor to today's United States Air Force Research Laboratory, produced a three-page proposal on a variety of possible non-lethal chemical weapons, which was later obtained by the Sunshine Project through a Freedom of Information Act request. Operation Midnight Climax and George Hunter White If I remember correctly, the basics were that the CIA in the 1950s wanted to research the possibility of using LSD for mind control. Consultant George Hunter White was given the task, 
so he would host dinner parties in his New York apartment and dose pitchers of martinis with LSD without the knowledge of his guests to see what would happen. One party goer later stumbled into a hospital, not knowing what was happening to her and understandably thought she had gone insane, attempting to have herself committed. So things got too out of hand, and the CIA decided to pull back on the operation. White, who was apparently a big fan of alcohol and narcotics himself, moved the operation to San Francisco. He would hire prostitutes to dose their clients while he watched the events unfold behind a two-way mirror. Apparently he also sat on a toilet the entire time because he didn't want to miss a second of what transpired. Operation Foxley, the Allies proposed a plot to assassinate Hitler during he morning constitutional walk at the Berghof. Although meticulously planned and researched with cooperation from a captured German soldier who served as a guard at this location, to involve a two-man sniper team with ingress and egress routes, it was never carried forward. Supposedly it was decided that by 1944 the removal of Hitler would actually make things worse for the Allies because he would likely be replaced with a more competent commander. There's a declassified CIA document titled Soviet Jokes for the DDCI, presumably the deputy director, that just has a list of various political jokes about the USSR, similar to the ones Reagan would occasionally tell. The purpose of this list is unclear, but it's pretty weird. The CIA's attempt to train cat spies. They tried to train cats to be spies by implanting recording equipment in their bodies and letting them loose near Soviet buildings. The cats could accurately travel short distances to targets but the training didn't stick well enough for the cats to meet the CIA's eavesdropping needs. Program got shut down after a few millions of dollars worth of investment. Edit, as some people have pointed out, the only cat trained in this project got hit by a car after wandering away from its target in a park, adding to how bad this project was lol. I forget the name of the project, but I remember reading about a Cold War era concept for a weapon that was essentially a rocket with a nuclear engine but instead of launching it into a target the rocket would fly over an area and spew radiation all over it. The Sigma War Game Series Classified war games of possible U.S. involvement in Vietnam. Run several times over the early 1960s. The U.S. lost almost every time. The best case scenario was where the war dragged on for several years until public opinion in the U.S. forced them to leave. So basically the Gov was entirely aware they would likely lose a war in Vietnam but went in anyway. They managed to pull off the best case scenario for themselves and it only cost the Vietnamese a couple million dead. Operation Northwoods, in which the CIA wanted to do a bunch of false flag terrorism operations against the United States, which would then be used as a justification to invade Cuba. Kennedy rejected it, and by sheer coincidence, was assassinated shortly thereafter. Wasn't there one involving stealing a wrecked Soviet submarine in the Pacific, I feel like one of my older relatives sent me something like that as a things from my job I wasn't allowed to mention until now. Operation Unthinkable At the end of World War II, the British Armed Forces Joint Planning Staff in May 1945 submitted to Prime Minister Winston Churchill a plan where the goal was to invade the Soviet Union, Using ex-German troops and German industrial capacity if needed for the goal as stated, the overall or political object is to impose upon Russia the will of the United States and British Empire. The Ghost Army was a US tank brigade in World War II. Except instead of actual tanks and soldiers, it was made up of inflatable tanks and art school students. They cruised around pretending to be an actual brigade to dash of the Axis forces. It worked. Their activities remained classified for 50 years. There's a cool documentary about it if you want to learn more and see what it looked like. The Finders Cult Documents P1, P2, P3 A crazy amount of info released by the FBI about a cult with CIA ties back during the 80s. They abducted or otherwise obtained children that they sexually abused and made participate in ostensibly satanic rituals. Repeatedly evidence of child abuse or neglect was ignored. 
and testimony of FBI or customs agents being told to fuck off by CIA members are documented. The CIA did even admit to working with the cult, but only under the guise of computer training. The cult operated under the guise of one of those new age groups and suppositions that they were attempting to mold the kids into the what they thought was a better form were put forth. Swept under as just satanic panic but was far from that. There's an audio recording of Nixon talking to a guy from Kaiser Permanent about how they would dismantle the healthcare system. They even say something along the lines of no this isn't about providing more care, it's about providing less. Honestly a lot of the Nixon audio recordings are fucked up. Like how the entire war on drugs was just to target hippies and black people, both of whom are Nixon's political enemies cause they don't vote for him. Phoenix Program Guantanamo Bay torture techniques were developed by the CIA Vietnam Phoenix Program. The Guantanamo guards didn't come up with the enhanced interrogation by themselves. They were taught. Before Guantanamo Bay the torture techniques were used in Latin America. The picture of the black hooded man, La Capucci, standing on a box in crucifix style with dangling wires was used in Latin America known as La Cama after a captured Chilean women. I'd imagine MK Ultra has been said numerous times. What really stands out about the body of documentation we have available to us is not what is recorded so much as what is redacted. Vile things were done across numerous agencies and over a span of decades under the auspices of it, or its successor projects. And yet, a ton of the FOIA MK Ultra documents are heavily redacted. Considering the monstrous nature of the behavior we know they engaged in, what the fuck is under all that black ink? CIA, Project Dark Gene Americans were desperate to fly over the Soviet Union and test their air defenses which they had not done since Gary Powers was shot down. As well as gather signals information under a complementary program, Project Ibex to allow jamming techniques to be developed. The idea is that an American pilot would be training an Iranian pilot, this was before the Iranian Revolution, in an F-4 Phantom or F-5 Tiger, and they would get lost and accidentally enter Soviet airspace. It went about as well as you can imagine. With half a dozen Iranian aircraft shot down, and all crews either killed or captured. 28-page documents showing Saudi Arabia funded a dry run of the 9-11 hijacking sequence in 1999. I think we also recently sold them $500 million in arms after their prince murdered a US journalist with a bone saw. They are considered our allies. Operation Paperclip Basically, we went to the moon because of Nazi scientists working for NASA. Operation Northwoods is pretty wild too. They we going to blow up a commercial airplane and blame it on the Cubans to give reason to go to war against Cuba. JFK chose not to sign off on it. In Canada the treatment of abducted indigenous children away from their families and into residential schools was so harsh that the term residential school syndrome was invented to describe the PTSD suffered by the victims. Aside from the beatings. Existential crisis perpetrated against children as young as five there was the question of unethical medical studies such as the deliberate starvation of 1000 children to study malnutrition. Does anyone recall, there were some leaked NSA documents I'd seen on Reddit a while back but can't dig up now, it was diagrams and descriptions of how spyware could be sent and installed by the NSA from miles away, on devices like fridges and even TVs and I think a side table of some sort. Absolutely chilling stuff. MK Ultra and Operation Midnight Climax both sound pretty unbelievable the first time you hear about it. Also luckily it didn't happen but Operation Northwoods would have been absolute insanity. They proposed to both stage and actually commit acts of terrorism against the military and civilians to blame it on the Cuban government and justify a war with Cuba. They talked about hijacking a plane and shooting it down or giving the appearance that it was shot down, blowing up a US ship and orchestrating violent terrorism is US cities. Luckily Kennedy rejected the proposal. The fact that this was ever even on the table is crazy. Operation Northwoods 
a plan by the US to attack its own military and civilians and blame it on Cuba to then use it as an excuse to invade Cuba. Change Cuba for another country and tell me if it sounds like a more recently conspiracy theory. Not sure if this qualifies per the terms of the question but how about the whole origin of the state secrets privilege in US law? Our government can refuse to provide evidence or information claiming state secrets. The court case that took this all the way to Scotus turned out in the end the bunk and the US Air Force was just looking to screw some widows out of payouts over the deaths of their husbands. The CIA built a robot dragonfly and a robot catfish. The military tried to weaponize lightning. The government hired sex workers to dose their clients with LSD. The CIA invested millions in a program called Acoustic Kitty that tried to make cat spies by implanting microphones and neurotransmitters into them and having them spy on foreign officials. However, it failed when the first and only spy cat was hit by a car. The CIA developed an assassination weapon that was essentially a poison heart attack gun once it was shot, it was untraceable in the victim's bloodstream and left no mark on their body. The Vietnam War Crimes Working Group They found that US soldiers had committed 28 massacres of equal or greater magnitude than my lie that the public was unaware of. When the Apollo 11 returned to Earth from the moon landing mission, the hot air from the spacecraft knocked over the American flag and it has been laid there ever since. America was so embarrassed by the fact their astronauts managed to accidentally knock over their own flag before leaving they kept it classified until after Obama became president. Operation Midnight Climax discussed in the book Chaos was really wild. The CIA ran a brothel in the 50s and 60s where they unknowingly dosed the customers with LSD so that they could run mind control experiments on them. This is real. Documentation on this was obtained from a FOIA request. The gay bomb proposal in the Air Force. Theory was that a munition loaded with pheromones could make enemy soldiers sexually attracted to each other and be much less dangerous when your own troops came to attack. The Soviets used a nuclear bomb to blow out an oil-slash-gas rig fire. In another underground nuclear test. The manhole cover for the tunnel was never found. One explanation is the nuclear test blew the manhole cover so high, that it could now be in orbit. The Sniffer Planes The Great Oil Sniffer Hoax was a 1979 scandal involving French oil company Elf Aquitaine. The company spent millions of dollars to develop a new gravity wave-based oil detection system, which was later revealed to be a scam. ELF lost over $150 million to the hoax. In France, the scandal is known as the Avions Renafleur, sniffer aircraft. Operation Tiger It was a rehearsal for Operation Overlord, the invasion of Normandy, the so-called D-Day. The Germans turned up during it and started shooting at the Allied landing craft. In a panic the Allies started shooting at everything, including the landing craft. In the end 749 American soldiers were killed. It was of course instantly classified and information on it was hard to come by for decades. The Bat Bomb Attach small incendiary devices to bats. Drop from a plane. At a certain height it opens and the bats go to roost in the buildings. The incendiaries then start loads of individual fires. In WW2 Japanese buildings were susceptible to fire. I think during the test they burned their own buildings down. The Zimmerman Telegram Germany sent a telegram to the Mexican president to take back Texas Arizona and New Mexico. America was enraged by it enough to enter the war and the Mexican president realized it wasn't feasible to try and take those states back. Operation Northwoods It was a proposal to kill Americans and blame the attack on Castro, thereby granting the military the pretext to invade Cuba. The Kennedy administration ultimately rejected the plan. For them to even think about doing some shit like this makes my blood boil. Learning about the Zimmerman telegram in AP history always struck me as comical and absurd. Germany, hey Mexico, want to go to war with the US this afternoon? Mexico, sorry Germany, my mom reads my texts.
US, Germany you slick Sinovich somebody's got to teach you some manners. The Otter Dossier At some point in the 1960s, the CIA tried to turn otters into super soldiers. It seems so fake because it sounds ridiculous but the files themselves are so detailed that it's hard to not imagine someone trying it. The FBI plotted the assassinations of Milk, Malcolm X, and Black Panther leaders such as Fred Hampton because they were spreading left-wing ideas that would disrupt the social structure of black people being the underclass within the structure of American capitalism. Not kidding. This was during the height of the Cold War so anything left-wing was seen as a national security threat. The Stargate Project it ran from 1978 to 1995 and was created by the Defense Intelligence Agency, and I think in the later years it may have moved to CIA, to research the possibility of using psychic phenomena for military intelligence. They mostly focused on remote viewing and ESP, and by the end they had a team of about 20 psychics. It got terminated and then immediately declassified in 1995 when the CIA claimed the program had never produced any accurate information. Operation Gladio Basically, after WW2 the Americans were worried about communism spreading through Europe. So they found all the fascists who weren't rounded up with Mussolini fall and funded the tits out of them as long as they stood firmly anti-left. I haven't read into it myself but my history teacher told us about uh, the different ways the CIA tried to kill Castro. The exploding cigar is obviously most famous, but apparently there was an effort to seduce him to purposefully infect him with various teas, and none of them took. As T. Berg, teacher, Rip, put it the man was Rasputin of the cock. I don't know how much of it has been declassified, in terms of actual documents, but Operation Gladio, anyone. Another one that, to this day, not a lot of people may know about although it was briefly mentioned in Andy Kittis's The Power of Nightmares was a book called The Terror Network, which was authored by a very suspicious journalist with very weird ties to western states or at least the US State Department and such which alleged that the USSR was in charge of and slash or financed and worked with a big ass terrorist network that primarily bombed the west and other nations. Bill Casey, Reagan's first CIA director, had a special NIE commission to look into the myriad claims from the terror network. The resulting report basically concluded that Claire Sterling's book was only somewhat correct, if that. And contained many, many instances of misinformation elsewhere. Casey initially objected that, in the first draft of said night, there was, supposedly, far less info on Soviet ties to terrorism than he read in Sterling's book, so he had it revised. Later, Melvin Goodman, head of the Office of Soviet Affairs at the CIA from 76 to 87, claimed that the terror network was basically just black propaganda, i.e. basically almost wholly made up, from the CIA itself. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.